Did you know that the electric generator in a wind turbine has a maximum efficiency of 60%? What can we learn from traditional windmills about renewable energies? And how can we apply this knowledge to solar to gain 20% efficiency? And that's how I welcome you to the Fox Electrolyzer channel, where we talk about renewable energies like solar and wind. Here you can see the piston moving up and down. A 2.5 kilowatt wind pump can lift 30,000 cubic meters liquid from a depth of 50 meters a year. Costs result to only 2 cents per cubic meter. We will compare three aspects of the traditional American wind mill towards a state-of-the-art wind turbine. The blades, the wind vane and the steering, and the energy storage. Let's start with the different blades. The traditional windmill has many blades, which is very inefficient, about 30%. But these many blades lead to high starting torque. Also, it can be run in lower wind speeds. We are talking about 5 to 20 miles per hour or 24 to 32 kilometers per hour or 6 meters per second. This increases the over the year running time. It works acceptably in turbulent winds, like around trees, bushes and in urban conditions. The conventional wind turbine has three blades, which is very efficient, about 40%. Its lift type blades harmonize with high revolutions for electric conversion. It works best in laminar winds and the starting speed is slightly higher than the drag type. As I mentioned before, the electrical loss is about 40%. Let's talk about the wind turbine steering and the wind vanes of wind pumps. The wind vane is a sheet of metal behind the rotor which always turns the turbine into the wind. Amazingly, it acts as an automatic brake. The wind vane offset to the mast axis turns the rotor out of the wind in harsh conditions. The name for this is furling mechanism. Wind turbine speed control. The modern wind turbine is turned by motors. To be turned remotely is a big advantage when the generation depends on the grid capacity. The wind turbine control system contains of brakes, sensors and motors. They are prone to fail. This is proven by the two pairs of sensors who measure wind speed and wind direction and its two redundant motors. If one fails to rotate the gondola, the other one jumps in until the mechanics arrive. Do you think modern wind turbines look beautiful? Please let me know down in the comments below what engineers could improve. Wind turbines energy storage. The third chapter before we get to the learnings for solar is about energy storage. To store the energy from a traditional wind pump is easy as long as there is enough ground water. Can you imagine that such a wind pump can lift liquids from 300 meters depths? Let's compare this with the modern wind generator. The shame of switching off renewable energies is so big that they have given it a charming name. It's called wind curtailment. You can read the article on the Fox Electrolyzers page about this wind curtailment and how many kilowatt hours or megawatt hours every country loses per year. There are maybe a couple of projects worldwide where batteries store the wind electricity. Because batteries can store energy over long periods of time, hydrogen could be an option. This wind to hydrogen project in Germany is fantastic to test power to gas processes. If we take a look on the international hydrogen price list, which you can see on the Fox Electrolyzer Community's members page, we go through all the hydrogen components from hydrogen storage systems over hydrogen compressors, hydrogen cars. If we pass by the hydrogen solutions like the Fox Electrolyzer itself, we finally arrive at big electrolyzers. By scrolling down the technical data, we'll arrive at the prices and we will see this one megawatt electrolyzer costs several million dollars. Let's summarize traditional versus conventional wind turbines. Traditional wind mills work longer time. 
The self-steering is trustful. They have no electric conversion losses. Wind pumps form a potential energy which is storable. And now hold tight. If we do not need much drinking water in your region and you need electricity much more, I know a liquid we could pump with this wind energy. And it's oil. Oil is needed throughout the year and can be easily stored. Just think about that. But let's get back to the modern wind turbines because they lack an energy storage solution. Even though the blades are much more efficient with the three blades lift type design and electricity is so much needed, the overall efficiency is comparable with a wind pump. Modern wind turbines can be controlled remotely, but sadly there is no cheap way of storing wind energy, so that they are also losing a big part of the energy through wind curtailment. But in order to have the most of it, we need to store them. If you want, you can watch the videos about electrolysis and hydrogen later on. Let's talk about solar. In our modern world, the hunger for electricity is immense. Most of the people I know do not have wind vanes nor pumps for groundwater. Most people have photovoltaics. In Germany we use a power equivalent of six humans every second of our life, only residential. This flowchart shows a common solar setup where material waste and conversion losses are big. The DC power converted by the panels is converted to AC through expensive microinverters. Shaded panels won't lower the string voltage and the cable sizes are small, that's the advantage. To charge a battery, this AC is then converted to DC again. And when the owner wants to run his laptop by night, the DC electricity from the battery is reconverted to AC through his house grid until the converter of his laptop makes DC low voltage again. So let's talk about synergies. We will use the example of an aquaponic for an efficient solar setup. The fishes in the pond need air. The air pumps are sized concerning to the solar panel's voltage and phase to the east and west. They run early in the morning and in the evening without any regulator or conversion. During midday, the water pumps circulate the water through a filter and the plants in the pipes are fed by the water that salad grows and the fishes have clean water. The panels are placed close to the DC pumps for short copper wires. Also, the ground level pump is solar. The pond and the tank on the roof serve as energy storage. The belonging household got along with a 400 amp hour 24 volt system for light internet and a fridge. The benefit was fresh salad and tasty fish. The electric investment was much lower than a typical German PV setup and even the lead acid batteries and the charge controllers were not smart, no cutting edge. The efficiency was better. Sometimes the water would overflow from the groundwater pump which irrigates the trees and plants around. The aquaponic was dimensioned for the worst case so that the fishes will survive. Excess power could be harvested as well with a DC load. So if you have the chance to use DC directly, do it and you will have 20% more energy. The Fox electrolyzer is a perfect example of a resistive dummy load. It can be set up in a way that it only runs when the battery is full. It is a DC load and can be connected lossless to the solar system. It stores the excess energy as hydrogen gas, which you can then run an electric generator, a car, a fuel cell, or simply cook with it or heat up your house. Conclusion. Let's wrap this up pretty quick. A wind pump takes the motion of the wind directly to mechanical energy to pump the water because that's what we want. Through its simplicity, it can still compete with the efficiency of a modern wind turbine. Take this insight into solar photovoltaic systems. Combine panels with loads in the most 
harmonious way possible. This leads to efficiency gains and extreme cost reduction. Number one, design the array with a similar voltage to the load. Number two, keep the distances short. Number three, avoid useless conversion. AC is for motion, dynamic motors, washing machine, fridges, so on. DC is for batteries, electronics and lightning. The last point is plan for peak production excess power use. This situation will happen. This way you will get minimum 20% more efficiency by spending less money on failable equipment. Thank you so much for watching. We have to make our living by what we do. We want you to be energy independent. Energy is a gift and that's what we work for. The only thing we ask you is please give us a like, subscribe to our channel and push the bell notification button. If you want to see the full tutorial, you can watch it on the Volks Electrolyzer community members area totally for free. You get access to the full electrolyzer mounting tutorial without commercials. You get the international hydrogen price list with all the components you need. Read the newest article and check out our explanatory pictures and schemes. You get the possibility to become a sales partner our shared experience and your knowledge is key to the Volks Electrolyzer community. So please consider to become a member under v-electrolyzer.de.